This is a video about a puzzle called the Tower of Hanoi. My name is Alan Doran. You don't need to have watched any other videos before you start this one. Here we see an illustration of a dome and beneath it a brass plate with three one cubit long diamond needles inserted into it. There's also a B giving you scale since these needles are, if you read the description here, supposed to be the width of a bee's body. At the start of creation, God supposedly placed 64 discs of pure gold on the slab, on one of the needles stacked from largest at the bottom to smallest at the top. This is the Tower of Brahma. Night and day, the priests are continually occupied in transferring the discs from the first diamond needle on the left to the third needle on the right, without infringing any of the rules. This priest looks very puzzled. He's wondering, what are the rules? The priest can only move a single disc at a time. He can only place this disc on either an unoccupied needle or on a disc larger than it. So this means wherever we see a stack of discs, the discs will always run from the bottom to the top, largest to smallest. Here's a sample move. If we were to take a disc from the left-hand pile and place it onto the middle pile, we would actually be doing something against the rules. That is, the disc must be smaller than all the discs beneath it. So we can't place this disc from the top of the left stack onto the middle stack. However, if we decided in our move to take the small disc from the middle and place it onto either, in actual fact, the right-hand stack or the left-hand stack, this would be a valid move because we're placing a smaller disc onto a larger disc. Of course, this ensures, as we noted earlier, that the stacks are always larger at the bottom and smaller at the top. According to the rules, if we follow this for all 64 discs and we transfer them from the leftmost needle to the rightmost needle, then all the monks, the temple, the tower, and the world will crumble into dust. And that's the Tower of Brahma, or the puzzle known as the Tower of Hanoi. It was invented in 1883 by a French mathematician, Eduardo Lucas. It turns out we don't need to worry about the end of the universe or the end of the world coming anytime soon. If the monks were able to move one disc per second and they never made a mistake, it would still take 2 to the 64 minus 1 seconds for them to move all of the discs. And that works out at around 585 billion years. That is a very long time. OK, let's look at a simpler version of the problem. Rather than 64 discs, we'll just look at three discs. We've still got our three needles called here A, B and C. On the left, we can see the initial state of the problem. That is, all of the discs are stacked from largest at the bottom to smallest at the top on the leftmost needle. And we want to move them all to the rightmost needle, labeled C. OK, so from the initial configuration, We've got two empty needles, and it's okay for us to place a new disc onto an empty needle. So there are two possible moves here. We can take the top disc and place it on B, or we can place it on C. Let's suppose we take the disc from A and we place it on B. From here now, we've got some more valid moves. We can take the disc we've just moved and place it back from where it came onto needle A, which seems a bit silly, or we could if we wanted to place it on C. Alternatively, we could take the disc from the top of the stack on A and place it on the empty needle C. We couldn't place it on B because the disc on B is smaller than the disc we're removing from A. So we'll remove the disc from the top of A and we'll place it on the empty needle C. Here's the new state. From here, we've got a number of moves. Now notice we can't move the disc on A because 
To move it, we would have to place it on top of either the disc at B or the disc at C, and both of these discs are smaller than the disc currently at A. So there is no valid move that moves the disc from needle A. We could take now the disc on needle B and place it either on top of the disc on A or the disc on C, or we could take the disc on C and place it back onto needle A. How about we take the disc from needle B and place it onto the larger disc on needle C. Now, you can see what's happened. We've actually managed to move the first two discs from needle A to needle C and arrange them in the correct order. That is, we still have a stack going from largest to smallest, bottom to top. We haven't yet got the A underneath this stack. That's the next thing we need to do if we're to reach the desired goal. Have you got the idea of how these things work? I think if you want to really get a feel for how it works, have a look online and search for some of these uh, Tower of Hanoi puzzles that are available that let you do this interactively. Give it a go for three discs. When you can solve the puzzle for three discs, give it a go for four. If you can solve it for four, see how you go with five discs. You can actually buy these puzzles at toy shops too, if you'd like a physical one. That's the Tower of Hanoi. Here's a summary of the rules. We want to get all the discs from the leftmost needle to the rightmost needle, moving one disc at a time, where a disc may sit on an empty needle or it may sit on a larger disc. A disc may not sit on a smaller disc. If you get really bored, have a go with a 64 disc version of the Tower of Hanoi. Thanks for watching.